Celebrating three straight days of no mute button incidents at the workplace uh, today, Bill. And I'm, I'm betting it happens today, Rob. Just like the announcer says, the guy will never miss a free throw, and he blows it. Same thing with the mute button. I'm, I'm anticipating. I was hoping for more faith from you, Bill. <laughs> I think you're fine. Thank you, Maria. You're welcome. You know, you should co-host more. Thank you. Thank you. But I'm like in the baby chair. I'm looking around, and I'm like... Sink? I, I can't. Your lever doesn't go up? It, this is the highest I can go. <laughs> so, well, sorry. Ron's like eight feet taller than I, you right He now. is eight feet taller in, in real life, on, not just in chair life. On so. screen, we look equal, though. Yeah. yeah. That's true. You can't tell on screen. <laughs> but what the view that I have is Ron's like six feet up. Maria's like three feet below. I know. That's very look, true. I don't you know can what see happened. it on the... I don't know what happened. I got levels today. Yeah. I'm there co hosting levels. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Ron Stevens is the superintendent of schools in Berkeley County, and he is our guest in this half hour. Ron, good morning to you. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. Well, this was an interesting uh, past week weather-wise, and we, I guess this is two straight appearances. We're talking to you about school and delays and cancellations. Yes. And uh, I guess that was four snow days last week? It was. In a row, yeah. How many you built into the school year? Five. Five um, that are built in with our accrued instructional time over over the course of the entire year that we have approved uh, through the state that don't have to be made up after the fifth that I wanted to talk about. I'm glad you mentioned it now. After the fifth, we need to be prepared for um, remote learning. Um, so we, we'll have a, one more. Um, our, our staffs have all been working on things at the school level and uh, students have devices to be able to take home to work remotely in the, in the case that we would have multiple days coming up again. I remember when the pandemic began and we went to remote learning, the discussion was how we may never need another snow day because uh, with this ability to now remote teach and remote learn, why have a snow day? Remember those discussions? I, I remember those discussions. I do. Um, we, we do have uh, our our school calendars uh, and uh, you know the the length of the day have have time built in, um, so that there's more hours served throughout the year than are actually required, and uh, that's that's true to some uh, extent at every school district, and so you know we we have some time uh, and it is it is good to be able to have those students to to enjoy a little bit of of downtime and not hold them. Uh, responsible immediately for that remote learning but should the remote learning go longer than five or should the snow days go longer than five days um, remote learning is a good option okay is it is it the option or do you still have the option of doing makeup at the end of the school year or shorten spring break or we, shorten spring break yeah we yeah. we still have those options we still have those who options. Who makes that decision, Ron? Is it um, local or is it done by the state level? Or who makes that decision? Well, it, if we decide that we're not going to provide an alternative education plan, um, a non-traditional instructional day is what the state refers to it as. So if you see the initials, it's NTID. And schools utilize those plans. Um, and I don't, I don't expect that many will opt to just add on to the end of the year. Um, but that is still an option. So, uh, you know. uh, so you anticipate you and probably other schools will revert, re resort to the uh, uh, to the remote learning before you add on to the end of the school year. Yes. Yes. Now, now the for remote learning, do all the kids have a device that has been issued to them that they carry home with them every night? Every student, we, we are one-to-one, -one. every student has a device and we have the ability to do that. Now at some of the younger grades, those devices are not sent home with them every single day. Um, so then how but, would they do remote learning? Well, they're not sent home when we have days to give. Like last week, we had days, we had days that we knew if we were not in school, they would, there would not be um, required remote learning. So they'll be brushing off the um, the um, policies and procedures that we follow at the schools, reviewing things with students, um, reminding parents, and um, you know, should we go past one more day, then those devices would be going home. So, how do we know in advance? I wouldn't be surprised if they start to bring them home now on a regular basis. Sure. Okay. So, is the internet 
in the area improved enough that you could actually pull this off in a more efficient way than what we discovered in the pandemic was not necessarily so accessible? I, I believe it is. And I think the key here is what we found during the pandemic is it, it hit us so quick we had no plan and we were we were we were building an airplane in the air um, and that proved to be very difficult because we had no experience with that we have experience with it now and we're not looking at something that is going to be the entire remainder of the year we would be talking about a day or two uh, so the ability to be able to pull that off yes I think that we're prepared to do that Maria so um, this was a question that I had had and I know it um, it would be controversial to do something like this, but there are obviously different parts of the county that roads get treated um, more quickly and better. Have you ever given any thought to, um, instead of one size fits all, we shut down the whole county, that you say, um, Jarrettstown is on remote learning or North Hedgesville is on, and, and again, I get how that could be very um, complex, but you know, you watch people's reactions and it's like, mm -hmm. well, 81's fine, Route 9's fine. Well, yeah, but those back roads, but so have you ever thought about just doing a piece like that and, or would it just be so crazy to try to do? Um. There's all, we're always thinking, trying, mm -hmm. to, trying to think of options um, so that we can keep the, um, uh, the integrity of, the, of, of educating mm -hmm. our students. Um, that is something that would be extremely difficult. Uh, just, just in what you had said there, there was a, there's a whole lot of unpacking to be done there. Um, first of all, to identify which specific pockets there are. Uh, we're not on every single road. We're not at every single bus stop. We're not at, you know, and so when we had days like last week, we have to be able to take a snapshot of the entire county. We're not able to be on every inch of, of the highways. We use forecast models, predictions, communications with the Department of Highways, um, and our own people are out there um, checking those roads. So to be able to nail it down and say this road is good and this road is not, that would be extremely difficult to do overnight. Um, so that that part would be tough. Um, remote learning, as we learned during the pandemic, is is challenging for our staff as well. Um, so what you what you're implying is that we would have to have staff to be able to do the remote learning at the same time as we're doing in person learning, which, as I said before, we learned is extremely difficult. Um, so we've got those five days. We've got the, the accrued instructional time there. We don't want to make any mistakes. We take safety at the utmost uh, of importance. So we wanted to make sure that things that we're, we're doing things the right for the right reasons, not just the right thing, but for the right reasons. And that's, that's pretty much the, the situation. Now, Bill, during the uh, commercial time, commercial time out as we, as, um, we had before I, as I was coming in, he did mention, you know, are there, would there be times where we would think about doing that? And the answer is we have done things like that in specific regions when we're dealing with things like flooding, um, you know, road construction, road outages, where we've had to uh, say this region is not, we're not going to be able to pick up in that region. It's just too dangerous or we're not able to access uh the accessibility is not uh, available. So it is possible that as we're considering things, we could do some shutdowns in certain areas, um, but for an overnight call in uh, for snow, ice, uh, temperatures, wind chill, uh, it's just too unpredictable. Yeah, I, I want to shift gears in just a second, but going back to a point you made earlier I thought was very telling was that during COVID you were learning on the fly. 
now we're past that stage. We right. did learn lessons during COVID that could have application. So you're you're ahead of the game if you have to use remote learning today. Uh, shifting gears, uh, this is a interesting time, a very dynamic time when we look at the legislators. Uh, the legislative action has been taken, and I'm sure a lot you like everybody else is following it. Are there certain bills which you are hoping to get through and equally important are the certain bills that you're looking at with a with some nervousness and various scots and will you be hiring attorneys to defend your librarians in the near future <laughs> that's exactly right yeah yeah wow that was uh i had heard some some scuttlebutt about and s- I would, some of that yeah. but uh the, the the depth of that it, no uh senator barrett actually made a good point that i want to reiterate there there are you know a couple thousand of these bills that are out there um and we would have to go through and weed through each of them to pull out things that are are, are specific to us in our schools. We do that uh, to a limited um, a limited uh, amount at this stage. As things progress through, and there's uh, they narrow down the number of bills um, that are out there, then we'll be able to take a, a more in-depth look at that. But um, you know, we're we're hoping for some some help with attendance we're hoping for some some help with um you know the the funding formula for for schools um and when i say attendance student attendance um we're hoping for something with with peia we're not exactly sure there's yes. so many different people with ideas so what about discipline um it, I think last year there, there was a there was a we have a committee um, that was formed and the policy that was put in place last year. Yeah, I think the we're local, going, you're talking at the local level. Or the state yes, level? at the local, local level okay. that mm-hmm. that was uh, required at, by the by the state. Um, and I think we're going in the right direction. I, I do. And I, you know, we're six months in. Uh, less than that, if you talk about the amount of time that we've had students in buildings. So I think we need a little bit of time to to see what happened before we change it up to something else. Um, I think that becomes a little bit frustrated for for educators. Um, but yes, uh, guidance on discipline uh, would certainly be would be beneficial. Resources, what we can do when we when we come across situations uh, where students are are uh, lashing out. There's a variety of reasons for them to do that. Um, been in education for 30 plus years and have come across very few bad students that are just bad people. And um, you know, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but a majority of the time they have issues. They have issues at home. They have, uh, you know, maybe things that, that have happened to them or they're going through things. Um, so I think resources is going to be the, the big topic for us. I realize it's very early in the game, but last year the legislators uh, put an aid in kindergarten through one, two, or three, depending on how the school wanted to implement it. Uh, hey, uh, at this early stage, have you noticed any impact? Well, I, I, it is early, yes. just like you said. Yeah. And uh, prior to this year, there were we did have um, – aids in kindergarten classes this year um and, and thank goodness the uh, we had legislative assistance to say we're going to do this in stages you know we know how difficult it's been to find employees but to find employees for first second and third grade would have been um that would have been an impossibility uh, we struggled to fill those positions at the beginning of the year for our first grade aids uh, and what we found is a number of aids that were in some challenging uh, classrooms uh, with students who have special needs and may have some issues um, they opted through no fault of their own they opted for a, a first grade environment that um, you know I don't want to say uh, let's see they opted for a first grade environment that focused more on helping students learn to read instead of learn to behave um, because the behavior part is very challenging so all that did is it moved student, moved our aides from one room to the other, and now we're trying to fill those positions. If we had done that for second and third grade at the, uh, for all this year, I think it would have been extremely difficult to, to address those students who need it the most, and those are the ones that are in our special needs classroom. So 
Are we having some, some success for that with that? I would say in our first grade classrooms, we've got growing pains. We've got first grade teachers who have taught for you know, one year to 40 years that have never had an aide in their classroom. Um, and this was uh, placed upon the schools to be able to do this. So we are now training teachers on how to work with aides. We're training those aides on what is expected so I think it's going to be, it's going to be. There's going to be some time before we can see uh, major leaps and successes because they have to be trained. They have to understand how this works. They have to be be comfortable working together because it is a team in a classroom. Um, and we're going to experience that in second grade coming up, and then in third grade coming up. So I, I think it's going to be a cycle. I'm excited about it. I think that this is something that will help. Um, are the legislators aware, Ron, that effectively all that's happened in this first year is we've just taken one group that was plugging a leak here and moved them over there to plug that leak, and then we let the leak where they were just drip again? Well, Because well, we, that's what it sounds like happened with the AIDS. Yes. Um, we have communicated. We, we had a, a legislative meeting back in November with our local legislators and relied on them to be able to take our information out, but at at state meetings with other school districts, the superintendents um, and in the Department of Ed, they have all communicated that in their areas as well. So um, I think that they're aware and um, you know, the same group that talked to the legislators and got them to you know, put this in in stages instead of all at one time are the ones that are talking to them now. I, I think they're getting that message. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, give us the opportunity to do that. There's training that has to be done, but there's just not enough bodies right now. And, um, you know, we can fill them slowly. We're having some success. Um, we're coming back. You know, I can speak for Berkeley County. We're, we're, um, we're starting to get a, a more positive feel about things in the schools, a more positive feel about things in the community. We've got a number, more people are talking to us about um, entering the field uh, staying in the field, um, you know, so I think that we're going in the right direction with all this, but it's just not, we're not going to be able to dump a bucket load of, of aids to cover 60 different classrooms in second grade this year. So, 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 ahead, Mary, you're, sorry. Um, so you're saying that you feel like, um, things are on the upswing. Um, so the WVEA had a survey that came out just last week, um, 700 members polled, 62% of those um, uh, taking part in the survey reported higher levels of stress and burnout, 26% saying the highest level of burnout ever in their careers. Um, and then how, based on how you feel right now, how confident are you you'll continue working in education a third of them said not at all confident that they'll remain. And I get that this is a, yeah. you know, controlled group of folks that are responding. How do you, how do you respond to well, that? First of all, first of all, that's accurate. Um, you know, this, the stress level is still high. We, you know, all of those things are accurate. Um, I believe that we're taking steps uh, mm -hmm. at going in the right direction today. Uh, when this is over, I'll hustle over to Blue Ridge and speak to uh, a grow your own educator program that we have. Uh, there's a number of, of people that are interested in getting into the education field. Um, and I think what has happened over the last decade, we're seeing the fact that we've got so many people that look at education as a stable place. They're wanting to get into education, but they're struggling because they don't have the background in education. So I think focusing on grow your own, focusing on pulling in people that are, um, that are um, have full training in education is a first step, and that's what I'm excited about. We, you know, we've going to. I'm getting ready to speak to a, a a room full of people who are interested in entering the field of education. Two years ago, I couldn't have done that. Um, no, so I'm we, sorry, you could not have done that. Why? For what reason? What are you? Talking well, first about? of all, the the we didn't have the program. Okay. Um, that was established. Second of all, uh, you know, the stress that that. Um, we just talked about from the WVA that is real and it and it came about you know during pandemic times when the additional stress was put on when we were pulling people in multiple directions when they were teaching in the classroom and 
remotely. Um, and they still haven't recovered from that. So the people that experienced all that, that is real. And uh, so we're focusing on bringing people in to help them who have degrees, who have the training to add to the staff. Um, and it's again, it's a, it's, it will take time to be able to do that. Let's move back one stage, and that one stage has been at the college level mm -hmm. uh, when folks decide they want to go into education or not. Uh, the, the kids that's coming to going to college, after experiencing the frustration they have observed while they were in high school, uh, how much is that is how much of that has been conveyed to the attitude of the students? Because I hear there's fewer and fewer going into education than what we had a few years ago. Well, it's cyclical. It, it is all uh, cyclical, and you know, the group that would have been coming out into education over the last couple of years would have been those students who were um, seniors. Uh, in high school experiencing the pandemic times. Um, they would have been those students who were in um, college classes during the pandemic times and, and they would have seen what's what's going on. I think that's why we took a hit. We're now back to that uh, the group of students that graduated after that. They're in classes. They're the ones that are wanting to, to get back into it. They're seeing the work that, that that teachers did, they're appreciating that. And I think that over time, again, time uh, heals all wounds, and I certainly yeah. hope that, that we have uh, the stick to 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 stay together until time heals this one. You know, there were a number of things that happened during the pandemic that were, we didn't know what to do. We'd never experienced that before. And people were, you know, it was 24 seven. Um, and then coming out of that, we didn't have the influx of trained people to come into our staff. So the staff that we have were overworked. And now I think that we're getting back to targeting groups of people that want to be educators, who want to have that training from the beginning. And once these people start graduating, we'll start adding back to our, our staff numbers. But it is going to be a time thing. I totally agree with those uh, stats that, that Marie read. But hey, you're optimistic. I'm very optimistic. We're just about out of time. So before mm -hmm. you get to shout outs, Ron, yeah. I want to ask you about the uh, input on the calendar year for next year at the most recent school board meeting. Um, well, we have a uh, committee that puts the, the calendar together. Uh, do you have a specific question about the input or are you asking generally about the calendar? In general. I, I get okay. in general questions as to when will the school year begin? When will it end? When's the Christmas break? That kind of stuff. Uh, it, the, it, um, at the most recent board meeting, we had our second hearing, which is a, a reading of what uh, what is proposed for our calendar. Uh, it is a requirement by the state to be able to do that. So every district has to do that over a period of time. Then at the next board meeting, it'll be an agenda item, um, and our board will, will vote on it. Um, once the calendar is approved at the district level, at the county level, it then has to be turned into the state for final uh, once over. We have had feedback before on our calendars that had to be changed after um, after the after our board approved it. And there's also legislative things. There's there's discussion in the legislator, uh, uh, legislature about possibly uh, increasing the number of work days for teachers um, without students available. You know, so there's there's discussion about about a variety of things that could affect the calendar. So when will people know um, what we are approving or hope to approve at the next board meeting will be put out there? Um, and what was what was read before the board is available. We ca I can't tell you that that is exactly what the calendar is going to be until the state gets it back to mm -hmm. us, and that will be later in the spring. And have you given getting uh, have you gotten any further indication as to the extension of your contract? I have not. I have not. And um, you know, I don't really handle those things in public, so I just I just want to. We have we have not discussed that. I think it's about time that we we're going to have to we're going to have to get to that. Uh, I do think that the board is is looking at this year and how we've how we've um, handled things throughout the year. Uh, we do have my evaluation that they started to work on uh, on Monday, and they'll continue to do that. That is that is required to be finished uh, before March the first because I'm on a one-year contract. 
So I believe that between now and the end of February, they'll they'll make a plan to, to discuss that. When I'm looking forward to it. When is your contract over or finished? Is June per- 30th. This this is a one-year contract. It goes July 1 to June 30. June 30, okay, thank mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. All right, you get your superintendent shout-outs now. All right. Um, well, first of all, Last week, we did have to postpone our middle school um, teacher confer- uh, parent-teacher conferences and their schedule for this Thursday, which is tomorrow. I just want to remind everybody about that. Um, talk to you about our um, being prepared to, to hear things about transitioning to remote learning in case we have uh, weather days coming up. Uh, it's supposed to be warm this, this week, although we're going to have rain. rain. Yeah. Could cause some issues, but um, I think we're going to be okay uh, as I looked uh, looked ahead into things. Uh, last Saturday was our county science fair. We had more than 50 students who advanced to the regionals from Berkeley County, which is uh, that's that's a very good number. And I want to give a special pat on the back to Cameron Perry, a seventh grader at South um, uh, Middle School. She won the middle school division of the Dr. Martin Luther King State Holiday Poster Contest. So, um, you know, congratulations to Cameron. Uh, keep doing good things. We recognized. Um, Mr. Eddie McDonald, longtime bus driver, employee of Berkeley County Monday night. Uh, what a character. Eddie, if you're listening, I uh, hope you're having a great day. And uh, our volunteer of the month actually turned out to be a pair, uh, a husband and wife team. Um, Sarah and Michael White, uh, who volunteer at, at South Middle School, they're a fantastic pair. We're currently going through our math field day this week. Um, made a mention already about a grow your own program and I'll be speaking at that a little bit later today uh, actually later this morning uh, in about an hour um, and we did reschedule community outreach um, our board has um, wanted to be wanted our district to be transparent and available to questions from the community uh, so if you send your questions in um, we'll respond to those questions. We have an outreach session that's been rescheduled for January 31st at 5:30 at the Martinsburg Rec Center. Um, and other than that, um, uh, I'm excited to uh, to talk to this group of young students today, as you could probably tell. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Thanks, John. Thanks for coming in, Ron. We appreciate it. No chainsaw needed for me. No chainsaw. No. Well, no. however, if you have an axe, yeah. it's Paul's cousin, Bill. Yeah. Bill Bunyan. <laughs> it's a nice way to wake up. These blood's flowing you're alive it's it's not that bad i don't want to do it every morning but today was fine. <laughs> thank you Ron. thank thanks, you Rob. yeah thanks maria <laughs>